Welcome to my channel, and more importantly, my fake mon region known as the Firin region. A fantastical place with a variety of diverse and breathtaking landscapes, each housing magical and mighty creatures known as Pokemon, wielded by fierce warriors known as Pokemon Trainers. Over the next several videos on my YouTube channel, I plan to take you on an epic adventure through my imagination as I'll fully explore the sagas of the Firin region just as they would unfold in its conceptual games Pokemon Brain and Pokemon Brawn, introducing all of the characters you'd encounter on your journey and their Pokemon teams, including some familiar faces from all over the Pokemon world. But first, you must select the starter Pokemon that will be accompanying you on your quest. You have the Grass Cub Berry, the Fire Pony Feloga, and the Bubble Crab Krabub. So which of these three will be your secret weapon in the Firin region? I've been exploring the Firin region in an ongoing series here on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram page at Mikemon underscore regions, commissioning a variety of talented artists to help bring all of my ideas and designs to life and take you on an exciting journey through my imagination in my own little corner of the Pokemon world inspired by Iceland and Norse mythology. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button, and if you'd like to learn even more about the Firin region, make sure to check out some of my previous videos and subscribe to my channel for even more Fakemon content, as the Firin region is only the tip of the iceberg, as I have a variety of other exciting projects in the works that you can't find anywhere else. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much. I know it's been a while since I posted my last video. I've been going through a lot, but I'm so happy to be back with the full Firin Pokedex. So, for those of you who've been following me, you know that I just visited Iceland back in October, which is where the Firin region is largely inspired by that, as well as Norse mythology, which is heavily linked to Iceland and its culture, which I realized and experienced firsthand on my trip. It was so amazing, you have no idea how incredibly breathtaking it all was, and just so surreal to explore this place I researched and studied for so long, as I really engulfed myself in the culture while creating the Firin region, and just living it. It is such a beautiful country, the towns are charming, the people were all friendly, the culture was so fascinating, and the landscapes and different biomes were just out of this world. I highly recommend going. I saw ice caves and glaciers. I saw black sand beaches. I saw geysers. I saw lava fields and lots of other large landscapes. I saw some of the largest and most iconic waterfalls in the world. I saw volcanoes and lava tunnels. And of course, there was plenty of time relaxing at several world famous lagoons and in our beautiful penthouse apartment in the capital city of Reykjavik, where we had an amazing view of the city. I saw so much, including the Northern Lights. It was one of the best trips, if not the best trip of my life. But one of the best parts of the trip and the highlights was getting to meet one of my followers, Omar, who is Icelandic, and will be featured in this video as he will introduce all of the Firin Pokemon one by one. In true Icelandic, I mean Firin fashion. But first, I would like to share this heartwarming encounter with you because I had such a blast meeting Omar and his family. And I know just how excited he has been to be featured on this channel in this video waiting patiently. So it is my honor to introduce one of the Firin region's brightest and upcoming trainers, Omar. You're Icelandic. What are your favorite things about the Firin region? Favorite things? Oh, that's hard. Like, I liked how you like, did the like, the, it, the rainbow road like is in Mythbiden. Mm -hmm. I liked how you incorporated that in the design. And then I loved how well the Pokemon were made and like how well they matched with Icelandic like like this one. The this one was the uh, inspiration for the legendary. I loved how well like that was mixed with this. The shiny was mixed with this. And yeah. I just thought how that was super cool. Everything. Well, that's great to hear because honestly, for me, I feel like a lot of my designs. People just look at the art or like the general idea and they don't know like about all the research that's into it because a lot of people yeah. don't know, for example, Icelandic, you know, history or culture, you know what I mean? Yeah. For Cub. And it's so. hard to put that all in one design. Yeah, and I mean, that's fun, but it's so cool when someone like, like you appreciates that, you know what yeah, I mean? And like cram it into one video and show its design. It is such an honor to meet you two. Um, there's striking resemblance to the protagonist of the Firin region, which he actually made the hats for 
which is crazy. That's the brain version and that's the brawn version. Put it on, put, the, put one on. Let's see what you look like in it. Looks just like Eric, that is crazy. Also, you will, I also made one for him. And that is awesome, thank you so much. I, I can't wait to try that on. That is so cool. I'm gonna wear that the ice cave. We're going to the ice cave in a couple days. So I'll try to wear it to that. That is awesome. Thank your grandmother for me too, by the way. Um, but I have a surprise for you too as well, which I actually already told them. This is for the viewers. I actually told him about his surprise off camera because I don't like doing like the fake YouTube responses. I wanted it to be genuine and didn't want him to have to force a response, but he's gonna have a cameo featured in the fan games, Pokemon Order and Pokemon Chaos for the Luika region as a tourist visiting the Luika region from the Fearon region where he will pick his own design and his own um, dialogue, like two to three sentences, whatever he wants, with his favorite fake one from my region, Veshark, on his team. You can battle him, courtesy of his mother who told me all this. But I, I wanted to ask you if you wanted your character to be your current age now or your age at the time it releases, because it's going to be at least three to five years probably. I don't know. There's Everyone's always asking, but... It's such a big game and project, and it's not just up to me. I have a development team, and, you know, there's all sorts of problems and scheduling things. So I want to know if you'd rather immortalize your age now or look like, you know, whatever age you would be at the time. I think now I would like it to have my age now, but I might, like, want to change it. You let me know. So what we could do is we'll just wait on your design mm -hmm. till closer to time, the time. But if you want to pick your dialogue, you know, tonight or, you know, have your mother message it to me. You know, we can work on that. Mm -hmm. And you've already got your Pokemon. You can pick its moves. You can pick its nature, all of that. So, because I, I know you like the Pokemon games. So <laughs> you'll have full control over that. And we'll work that out. Yeah. So thank you so much for the hat. <laughs> I hope this surprise is equally as cool. I, I, I don't know. This is pretty awesome. <laughs> and you are going to be speaking in my one of my last videos for the Fearin region, where I go over the entire Fearin Pokedex, where you're going to say all of their names in traditional Icelandic. And I still think it's crazy how much you look like the protagonist. <laughs> and even crazier how much your mother looks like the protagonist's mother, Professor Aspen, because I didn't notice that till I Twitter stalked her. <laughs> and I saw like a photo with the glasses and the scarf and a similar haircut. So that's kind of a really cool coincidence. And once again, cool that you guys have been to Africa as well. So, because you'll be visiting the Luika region. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for all your help. Like when I asked you all the questions about you know, little things here and there. She was a huge help on my itinerary. And it's it's been such a pleasure to meet you guys. You're one of the first, you're the first fan I've met on purpose. <laughs> like, I've met a couple like randomly, like, you know, out in public. And it was, that was weird. But um, <laughs> so this is really cool and super, what makes it even cooler is the fact that you're Icelandic. And you know, you can share all these cool things with me and it makes me feel like I did things right. So thank you so much. You have no idea how much that means to me. All of this means to me. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Is there anything you wanted to say? Um, yeah, just again that I'm very happy to be on the channel and happy to help. Well, I'm happy to have you. Thank you guys so much, I think. Feel free to leave a comment down below to let me know which of these are your favorite, as well as what your Fearin Pokemon team is. I love to see it. And without further ado, let's take a look at the full Fearin Pokedex brought to you by Omar. One of the three starter Pokemon, Berry, Faloga, or Krabub, are gifted to you in your hometown of Apruna by your very own mother, Professor Aspen, after finally proving to her that you're ready to go on a Pokemon adventure of your own, after years of watching other trainers, younger than you, receive a starter Pokemon from her. Berry. Berry are lovers, not fighters, always giving hugs. However, when they feel they must battle, they splatter berries from their collar on their face like war paint to show they mean business. Shrubbyard. Unable to grow berries in its bush-like fur, since evolving, Shrubbjorn are more aggressive as a result. They feel as if they have lost a piece of themselves and often express their anger on the battlefield. Berserkers Berserker are overly protective of their territory as they draw strength from nature. While they are actually gentle giants when provoked or engaged in battle, Berserker lose control as they fight in a trance-like fury with claws strong enough to tear through steel. Fologa Faloga are quick on their feet generating heat as they gallop through the Firin region. Their small hooves can be heated to the temperature hot enough to forge steel and milk glaciers. Brenne. 
Easily agitated, Brene will often dash away when annoyed, leaving a trail of scorch marks behind in their wake. The intensity of their smoldering flames is fueled by their emotions. Hesselter. The four orbs circling its body are its four phantom limbs that can be called upon in battle or to gallop into the afterlife. Krabub. Krabub are curious Pokemon leaving no stone unturned on the vast beaches of the Firen region. The bubbles around their eyes act as lenses, enhancing their vision so they can see enemies approaching from all angles. Nauticlaw. Fearless Nauticlaw wear their armored shells into battle with great pride. They're often found in or around the Fearn region's frigid waters, using their pincers to raid those they deem unworthy. V-Crab. The crab command the seas with their razor-sharp claws and sturdy armored shell. Feared by most Pokemon for their fierce battle tactics, they always fight with a deep sense of dignity and respect. Next, we have the Pokemon found on the Howling Hills. Immediately after receiving your starter Pokemon, this area is considered Route 1, and these Pokemon are basically what most people would consider the Route 1 normal type, bug, bird, etc. But all of them can be found all throughout the Firen region as well. Lamini. These small Pokemon roll around their frigid terrain so they can generate enough heat to keep warm in sub-zero temperatures. Lamas. Lamas overpopulate the Firen region in massive hordes, often creating roadblocks for travelers. These hordes of Lamas will often act in sync with one another as they can create bridges over any obstacles that may present themselves during migration. Arcturn. Able to withstand the cold arctic winds, they travel in flocks across the Firen region in search of a cold place to nest until they are ready to evolve. Hawkryo. Soaring through the sky, the wind generated by Hawkryo is said to be so cold it coats the ground below in a gentle frosting. Girfal cold. Taking to the sky, it is said to cause powerful blizzards with the mere flap of its massive wings. However, there's nothing more frightening than its razor-sharp talons that, as some tales claim, are strong enough to lift icebergs out of the ocean. Wiggleam. A literal diamond in the rough, Wiggleam's small body is coated in rare minerals that offer it protection from hungry Arcturn. Crystallis. Crystallis are protected by a beautiful, rock-hard cocoon coated in jewels. They are said to undergo a miraculous metamorphosis into a truly exquisite Pokemon. Dymoth. Dymoth's exquisite wings are coated in rare gems that glisten in the light, especially as they flutter beneath the dazzling northern lights that occasionally paint the Firen region's night skies. Grumper. Always grouchy, there isn't much that brings Grumper joy. Able to face through walls with ease, Grumper wander home to home looking for their next meal. Grumper is a Pokemon Brain exclusive. While found all throughout the Firen region, usually loafing around or scavenging for food in or around its more populated areas, Grumper can be found as early as Route 1 if you're lucky, your best chances of catching it being at night. Chillinx Phantom-like, Chillinx aren't often seen unless they want to be. However, many claim their presence can be detected by a spine-tingling chill in the air and the ominous sound of a bell ringing. Unlike its predecessor, Chillinx are found on the prowl in the more isolated and colder climated areas like the mountains. Furzen Loyal to a fault, Furzen will do anything to make their trainers happy. Easily excited, they will pounce on top of and lick strangers with their icy cold tongue usually freezing them to the touch. Furzen is a Pokemon Brawn exclusive. It can be found on the first route, but is rather rare. You're more likely to find it looking for scraps or pets in the region's more populated areas, especially on a cold night. Snowvarkur. Legend has it that Snowwark created its icy chains as a way to bound its true power. Otherwise, everyone and everything within a certain radius would be frozen solid. Snowwark isn't as easy to find, or as friendly as Furzen, usually on the hunt in the region's wilderness and caves. Shokiru Shokiru are often found burrowing in the Firen region's snowy tundra. They hunt at night using the electricity stored in their cheeks to spot and stun their prey in the darkness. This is quite an elusive Pokemon found within the snowy areas of the Firen region, but you will be seeing plenty of your mother's Shokiru as it's her loyal companion. Tricoon these mischievous Pokemon like to trick and taunt others and attempt to rob them of their valuables. The citizens of Firen view them as pests, often trying to scare them off their property on sight. Raskerade Raskerade are quick and cunning Pokemon, making them quite the adversaries both in and out of battle. They often hide in the bushes, using the face on their tails as a decoy to distract their unexpecting targets. 
This line can be found in the forested areas of the Fearn region and a couple smaller settlements, but only at the nighttime. Christmas is huge in Iceland, with a lot of its own unique folklore creatures and myths surrounding the holiday, as well as many of our own. So naturally, I made a lot of festive Pokemon for the Fearn region to represent this, and revealed most of them around Christmas time. Reindeer. Reindeer frolic around the Fearn region, often bringing rain showers with them, helping new life flourish. It is said that reindeer can jump so high in the rain, it looks as if they are flying. Aikthrit. Aikthrit can distill large amounts of water from their oaky antlers, which they use to foster new life. Varinian folklore has it that hordes of Aikthrit are responsible for all of the rivers coursing through the Fearn region, which they are capable of walking across. And while found throughout the Fearn region, that's exactly where you'll normally find this line, near the region's rivers and other sources of water, such as its lakes, geysers, and various waterfalls. It is also important to note, these two Pokemon are usually always present when it's raining. Kisteltoe Kisteltoe are paired for life, showing nothing but endless amounts of love and support for their other half. While small, Kisteltoe proves just how powerful a weapon love can be. This single-stage Pokemon is exclusive to the snow-topped Festree Forest and can only be found with a friend in co-op. Festival Having been neglected by children out of fear of its monstrous appearance, Festival get the last laugh by stealing their Christmas presents and replacing them with patches of sharp fur. Nicholas. Children have been told a tale of a fearsome Pokemon that awaits those who stay up late on Christmas Eve in hopes of seeing Santa Claus, ready to punish them for their disobedience by devouring all of their presents. This line is also exclusive to Festry Forest. Dufflicate. Sweet as can be, Duplicate love to cause mischief, often outing themselves with a trail of frosting. Its edible frosting is said to have a magical property and come in a variety of flavors depending on Duplicate's ever-changing appearance. Duplicate can only be found in a little candy cottage hidden on the outskirts of Festry Forest alongside a bunch of other sweet fairy type Pokemon. In this cottage you'll also find the special cookie cutters and oven that allow it to change into its various different forms. Firunian Baneri Firunian Baneri take to the sky by spinning their ears like propellers. With their fluffy fur, most citizens mistake them for clouds. This regional variant can be found hopping and flying all throughout the Firun region. Firunian Lupani Firunian Lupani use its strong legs to launch itself into the sky, soaring alongside the clouds with its wing-like ears. Resonant the pests of the Fearin region, Resignat, often are found by lakes or rivers where they serenade wild Pokemon with their marvelous melodies. Although some Pokemon and trainers find these noisy Pokemon to be a nuisance, especially in larger quantities. Of course you can't have a Viking-inspired region without plenty of seafaring water-type Pokemon. Aquak. Flocks of Aquak flood almost every inch of the Fearin region's coast. They dream of one day venturing out to sea after evolving. They are often confused by foreigners for Pipplup. As its dex entry suggests, Aquawk is one of the most commonly found Pokemon within the Fearon region, as it's found all around the Fearon region's shoreline and along its beaches in large flocks. Harbored. Whether out at sea or in the sky, Harbored almost always have the upper hand in battle due to their versatility and hook-like talons. While Harbird can occasionally be found alongside a flock of Aquak along the beach or shoreline, it's more commonly found scavenging far out at sea. Cascod Cascod love to softly nibble at swimmers' feet hoping to play. Cascod are sought out by fishermen as their scales are said to hold a lot of nutrients and be a delicacy in the Fearon region. Cascod can be found swimming out at sea and are the Pokemon you're most likely to reel in while fishing. Catlantic Catlantic hide in the dark depths of the ocean, only making themselves known when it's time to feed. They weaken their foes with their trident-like fin, finishing them off with their razor-sharp teeth. You're more likely to catch Catlantic and other strong water-type Pokemon such as Gyarados the further out you go to sea. Shirimp Small but spirited, Sirimp serve up sass and style in their delivery of both fire and water type attacks. Sirimp generate immense body heat, allowing them to thrive in colder climates. 
Siaramp can most commonly be found in the various natural hot springs and lagoons of the Firin region, and even popping out of some of the geysers in the Galuna Ring geyser area. Lobstew. Lobstew are master chefs, earning them a solid place on many Pokemon trainer teams, as adventuring sure can work up an appetite. They can heat their large spatula-like tails to boil water or grill foes in battle. Unlike its predecessor, which is found more inland, Lobstew is more commonly found out at sea, keeping themselves warm in the Arctic waters surrounding the Firin region. Pirunian Lapras Having adapted to the rough raging waters surrounding the Firin region, Ferinian Lapras are much larger in size than their Cantonian counterpart. Capable of transporting small groups of people, they were said to help charter the revered members of the Voyage Clan across the neighboring seas years after the region was first founded. This powerful regional variant is a rare find found generally far out at sea, patrolling the Firin region. It is also the ride Pokemon used to traverse water. Firunian Nautic Having to adapt to face the fierce Pokemon that roam the Firin region, Ferinian Nitaik learned to fight by honing their anger. While small, these spunky Pokemon pack a punch. The Ferinian Nitaik line is a Pokemon Brawn exclusive. Ferinian Tribrute Much like their variants in the Loika region, Ferinian Tribrute travel in packs raiding the habitats of Pokemon they consider inferior. These masked beasts go berserk in battle, becoming blind with rage. Ferinian Voodoo The Voodoo spirit has chosen to find refuge in elegant dolls made of straw in order to channel the arcane magic coursing through the Firin region. Ferinian Voodoo's magic powers are bestowed upon those in possession of it. The Ferinian Voodoo line is a Pokemon Brain exclusive. Ferinian Voodoo. Ferinian Voodoo casts spells to carry out a variety of good deeds, such as to bless the land so it is fertile. Although it uses its powers of sorcery for good, many in the past used to fear this arcane power. Both of these version exclusive regional variant lines can be found within the region's smaller settlements as well as Loford farmlands and some open grassy areas. Squirrel It's said if you whisper a message into Squirrel's ear, it will be magically engraved on its scroll-like tail until it is able to deliver it for you. Ratatos Scroll Ratatos Scroll often find refuge in the branches of Yggdras soil as they form a beneficial partnership, helping to gather food and other resources in exchange for shelter. These two Pokemon can be located in the few forested areas of the Firin region, such as Festry Forest, and more commonly in the colorful Rainbow Woodlands. Much to my surprise, one of my most popular videos was actually one featuring Poison-type Pokemon, which is ironic as there's not a lot of venomous or poisonous creatures or plants in Iceland. So I had to get creative. Ferunian Ekans. Vibrant Ferunian Ekans uses its trippy patterns and metronome-like tail to hypnotize its prey. Retta. Just looking at Retta's dazzling and mesmerizing scales is enough to put anyone in a paralyzing trance. Many formidable Pokemon have fallen victim to this massive serpent's might. Ferunian Ekans and its new regional evolution Retta can both be found within the Rainbow Woodlands the floral fields, and even some of the grotto areas of the Firin region. Twerple. Desperate for attention, these troublemakers pluck flowers and tease other Pokemon. However, Twerple's own prickly petals are toxic to the touch. Perpunk. Do not underestimate this prickly Pokemon. Perpunk are as potent as they are audacious. These rebellious Pokemon dominate New Bloom fields during the Firin region's elongated summers. Both Twerple and Perpunk are exclusive to New Bloom Fields. Sporcerer. Sporcerer only come out at night using their magical spores to cast spells on those they feel threatened by, usually putting them to sleep. Enchantoreal. Enchantorelli are able to enchant an entire forest with their magical spores, awakening the Rainbow Woodlands' true beauty in the dark of night. In fact, this evolutionary line can only be found within the Rainbow Woodlands and more commonly throughout the nighttime. Dracid. 
Dracid are rooted in the emotions of others, only able to fully grow through the desires of a loving Pokemon trainer. Midgardler. Midgarden are usually jolly Pokemon, however, when frightened, they will plant themselves into the ground so that they look like a tree. Both Dracid and Midgarden are most commonly found throughout the Lodford farmlands and the forested areas such as the Rainbow Woodlands. Yggdrasoil Yggdrasoil's magical roots dig deep into the ground to help trees and other plant life within Miles Lorish. Firunian Zuba Having merged with the rare minerals found within the caves of the Firin region, Ferinian Zubat's bodies are rock hard. They are often mistaken for stalactites as they stake themselves into the ceilings of caves and hang upside down. Just like the original Zubat line, this variant of Zubat can be found throughout all the caves and grottos of the Firin region. Ferinian Golbat like its predecessor, Ferini and Golbat stake themselves into the ceilings of caves where they sleep upside down. Despite having eyes, they use echolocation to guide them even in total darkness. Ferunian Crobat Ferinian Crobat flies silently and swiftly through grottos. Unsuspecting victims have walked out of dark caves unaware that it has bitten them and drained them of their blood. Otorotto a torto like to burrow in the famous black sand beaches of the Firin region using their sturdy steel shell to disguise themselves as seashells. Most trainers don't even bother to use fire type attacks on it as they assume it to be a water type. Many experts believe that this is a defense mechanism. Torto can be found in sea caverns and along the region's black sand beaches. Shulksel Shellscale live in the sea and only haul themselves onto the shore in the dark of the night. Their impenetrable steel shell rattles while they roam the shores, warning of their arrival. Shellscale is extremely rare, but can occasionally be found lurking across the black sand beaches. It even has a boss battle in the sea cavern. Porifoam Porifoam protect themselves from predators at the bottom of the seafloor by producing and excreting dangerous toxins. Extremely absorbent, they are said to hold gallons of water within their sponge-like bodies. Porifoam can be found along the region's beaches or even floating out at sea. Aquortex Arguably one of the most intelligent Pokemon species on the planet, Aquortex hide in the depths of the ocean as they know just what mankind is capable of. Aquortex is a Pokemon brain exclusive. Muscular Small but mighty, Muscular use their small but mighty muscular use their big muscles to lift large wreckage and coral beds on the seafloor to keep themselves in peak shape. Muscular is a Pokemon Brawn exclusive. Both of these version exclusives can be found out at sea, along the beach, or even in the sea cavern. Termite. Termite's larger muscular set of pincers pound its food to a pulp, making it easier to chew. Fistmite. Fist might often get into fights with other members of its colony, but when push comes to shove, they work together to lift fallen trees and other large objects to get work done. Exterminite A force to be reckoned with, Exterminite are said to be able to lift as much as a Machamp and capable of going head to head with one in battle as well. The Exterminate line can be found in the Loford farmlands and in the more forested areas of the region where they terrorize trees. Many claim that this line is the reason why there are so few trees in the Firin region. This next batch of Pokemon are most commonly found within the Loford farmlands. Muley. Muley are full of energy that they choose to channel into their powerful kicks. Unfortunately for farmers, they like to practice their fighting techniques on large vegetables such as pumpkins and squash. In addition to the Loford farmlands and the neighboring town, the Muley line can also be found in a couple other smaller settlements. Dung Kick Dung Kick are skilled fighters that can execute a series of strong kicks. Stubborn, Dung Kick will never admit defeat, willing to fight against all odds. Cladle Cladle are often found in hordes gazing the Loford farmlands. Farmers use chunks of Cladle's clay coat to help fertilize soil. The Cladle line is the most commonly found Pokemon of the Loford farmlands, but can be found grazing in a couple other grassy areas as well. Aedlum To help fertilize soil, they guard over the Loford farmlands, helping to fertilize the soil with their thick clay coat. While they may appear lazy as they graze the fields, 
they work hard to maintain the crops in between naps. Phlegm While cute, it is easily agitated, causing its smoke wool to ignite. It will often create a series of small explosions if provoked. In addition to the Loford farmlands and the accompanying town, the flam line is actually more commonly found throughout the more volcanic areas of the region such as Fireshalt Mountain. Rammable Rammable ignites its smoke wool to give it a quick nitro boost, allowing it to ram into its foes at breakneck speeds. Roaster Roaster keep their eggs warm with the fiery feathers on their body. According to legend, they occasionally lay a golden egg, which is said to hold the secret to its elusive evolution. Like the Flamline, Roaster can be found in the Lowford farmlands, but is rather rare, and is more commonly found throughout the more volcanic areas of the region, such as Fireshalt Mountain. Cuckatrice Extremely rare, this fearsome Pokemon is considered by most trainers to be nothing but a myth. Nothing is scarier than a Cookatrix trying to defend its offspring. You will not find any Cookatrix in the wild, so you better start to lay one of those rare golden eggs if you want one. Firunian Borier Its golden fur draws power from the sun, while its razor-sharp bristles are tough as steel. Always looking for a battle, Borier rarely find a worthy adversary. Next, we have a few spooky ghost-type Pokémon, which are revealed around Halloween. Spiro. Superstition has it that spotting a noisy flock of Ferenian Spiro in the sky is a bad omen. Ferenian Spiro is found in the Loford farmlands as well as the neighboring farming town, but is a lot more common at night. Firo. Able to sense and feed off a of fear, Ferenian Firo is just as capable of provoking it with its eerie presence. Limbu. Limbu appear from out of the ground late at night, usually hunting cemeteries, and in many cases creating some of their own. Draugrave Draugrave wander through the darkness, usually in hordes looking for souls to feed on. They burrow underground during the daytime, waiting for nightfall to strike. Komara Komara sneak into people's bedrooms at night while they are sleeping, placing themselves beneath their heads so they can control their dreams. Dream on! Dream on. While Dreamin offer the perfect pop-up bed for traveling trainers, it is ill-advised for anyone to sleep on a wild Dreamin, as their worst nightmares will become a reality. Both of these ghost-type lines are found all over the Firin region, the Kamara line, however, being in or around the populated areas, and the Limbu line usually being out in the wilderness. Elve. Elfe are normally invisible, only showing themselves to those who shower them with enough gifts. Occasionally, Elfe will even leave them a gift in return. Being invisible, it's no surprise that the Elfe line is one of the rarest in the Furin region and is only found in the Rainbow Woodlands and the accompanying village of Turf Homes. Dwelf Like Elfe, Dwelf are normally invisible to the human eye. These whimsical Pokemon like to go around convincing trainers they have lost their minds. Hultelfolk while normally invisible, these majestic Pokémon are fierce battlers who will only appear to defend the Pokémon of the Rainbow Woodlands. Firunian Primitot Becoming one with the flourishing plant life within the Firin region, they live a peaceful life in the region's mountains and caves. They pass time stacking stones to help wandering travelers find their way, many of which turn out to be wild palbol. The Primitot line frequents the grassy hills and rocky grottos of the Firin region. Firunian Rock Troll, the Grass Rock. These jolly Pokemon roam the grassy hills of the Firin region, looking to aid other wild Pokemon however possible. They were once rumored to turn to stone during the daytime, but they actually flourish in the sunlight. Firunian Trotlogger. Despite their feeble appearance, Ferini and Troglogor are just as strong as they are wise. Overgrown plant life, these guardians protect the Firin region's grasslands. Palbo. Pabble has a form change just like Wishy Washy's and can be found all throughout the rocky areas and along the paths of the Firin region. On their own, Pabble are very weak. It's by gathering its friends and stacking on top one another, they are able to form a Goliath of a Pokemon. Next, we have some strong steel type Pokemon. Firunian Pixario. There are many theories as to why the ice on Pixero's body has magically turned to steel in the Firin region, but to this day no one can say for sure. These tiny Pokemon flutter around, picking fights with Pokemon significantly larger in size. 
and can be found just about anywhere. Ferunian Jumper Ferunian Jumper soar through the sky, scouting for those in danger to swoop down and rescue them. They are small, but mighty, striking swiftly with their steel wings. Ferunian Frigliff Ferinian Frigilis armor glistens in the light, often blinding their foes in battle. These majestic warriors' attacks are as gut-wrenching as they are graceful. Medroid Medroid are programmed to properly assess and assist all injuries or illnesses. They are used by Nurse Joy in the Fearin region to help heal injured Pokemon. Combat Combat are programmed to fight crime rushing into danger, ready to use force if necessary. They are often used by Officer Jenny and her officers to help maintain order in the Firen region. Medroid and Combot actually can't be caught in the wild until the second DLC where they're found in a lab area on one of the islands. However, you will be seeing plenty of them in Pokemon centers and patrolling the streets. You can even receive one of each as a gift Pokemon by completing side quests for Nurse Joy and Officer Jenny. Next, we have some shocking Electric-type Pokémon. Wolvolt. This feisty Pokémon uses its electrified claws to paralyze its prey. Wolvolt love to pursue unexpected hordes of Lamini and occasionally Reindeer. Wolvolt is found in and around the region's highlands, canyons, and gorges. Salvoltaic. Surging with power, Salvoltaic channel it into their large electrified claws. It only takes a mere scratch from its charged claw to paralyze its foes. The next duo, Vestplug and Sproutlet, are actually two of my favorites as they have a symbiotic relationship and share a charge instead of pollen. Both found helping to generate energy for the entire region in the Pokemon-powered natural power plant known as the Galvanized Garden. Vestplug Vestplug fly around looking for a Sproutlet to share their charge with. Together, the two can generate enough electricity to power a small town. Waspark. Waspark's large, three-pronged stingers pack quite the punch, electrocuting their targets on contact. When plugged into a flowwatt, they can power one another and generate massive amounts of electricity. Sproutlet. They drift through the air using electromagnetic fields. The galvanized garden is swarming with flower patches made up of wild sproutlet, attracting wild best plug looking to share their charge. Flowwatt. Flowwatt dance through the flower fields of the galvanized garden, spreading cheer. When connected to a wasp bark, they can power one another up and generate massive amounts of electricity. Ferunian Salandit Its venom sacs produce a fluid that thrives in cold temperatures. This process creates Salandit's poison gas. Ferunian Salandit is found in the colder climated areas like Ice Shult Mountain, whereas its fire-type variant can actually be found in the region as well in the warmer areas such as Fire Shult Mountain. Salizard For some reason, only males have been found. It creates a harem of female Salandit that it lives with. Ferunian Trubbish Trubbish have adapted into water types in the Furin region after being dumped into the sea alongside plastic waste. Garbotion Garbotion eats waste and toxins from the sea, which it uses to create more potent poisons inside of its body. Oiluga Oiluga are attracted to oil spills or garbage in the ocean, as they like to absorb the toxins into their oily coat to treat the water for other sea-dwelling Pokemon. However, exposure to its oily coat puts those around it at risk, causing it to live in isolation. Cetacrude Despite thriving in toxic environments, Cetacrude are said to be overly aggressive to those who pollute the ocean for other Pokemon. Part of this aggression could come from the fact that they normally live in isolation to protect the Pokemon around them from the toxins coming from its oily coat. Both the Trubbish and Oiluga line are exclusive to the murky, polluted waters surrounding the Pokecorp oil rig. Teethum. It likes to bully other Pokemon using the water ring on its tail, which is made from seawater mixed with a cohesive marrow-like fluid that teething create by grinding their razor-sharp teeth together. It is most commonly known to torment or provoke Finizen as they are arch enemies. Both Teethin and Finizen can be found out at sea. Jawful This devious Pokemon only reveals its master plan, changing its appearance to battle those it deems worthy particularly its mortal enemy, Halifin. Who doesn't love Fierce Dragon-type Pokémon? And believe me when I say the Firen region is full of them. Duormur 
On rare occasions, it's said to be able to see the future with its dual colored eyes, each said to show it two parallel futures to pursue. Dormer can be found all throughout the Firen region, but is extremely rare. It will appear though more often after winning a trainer battle as it seeks out a strong trainer to help it reach its full potential. It evolves into either Wisdormer or Valormer depending on the version you're playing. Wisdormer Dormer evolves into Wisdormer in Pokemon Brain. Through its beautiful blue eyes, Wisdormer is able to see the flow of mystical energy which it can cipher into its own special attacks. Valormer Dormer evolves into Valormer in Pokemon Brawn. Valormer are known to fearlessly rush into battle as their raging red eyes allow them to see their foe's physical attacks before they even make them. The next two Ice Age inspired Pokemon are thawed out from the region's frozen fossils found within its ice caves and glaciers. You have the frozen Toe Fossil and the frozen Horn Fossil. Regoloth Regoloth like digging around in the dirt and snow, using their shovel-like toes in search of valuables. Letharium Letharium loaf around in giant piles of snow, only expelling energy when they are either disturbed or threatened. Sarod Sarod generate and store static electricity in their fluffy wool coat using their horns to discharge it. Rhinome Thunderstorms are said to follow roaming Rhinome, with their large horns acting as lightning conductors. Next, we have some cross-gen evolutions for some fan-favorite Pokemon. Gorichu. Despite evolving from a Pokemon as cute as Pikachu, Gorichu are a force to be reckoned with as they are able to summon monstrous thunderstorms from the sky. Drakion. Drakion's diamond hard scales glisten an array of vibrant and dazzling colors in the light. Legend has it these magical scales are said to have the power to work miracles. Niplim. This prideful Pokemon's powerful singing voice is capable not only of shattering glass, but causing avalanches across the Furin region. Fosgrim. Fossigram are found by the water, where they play songs with their fiddle like finger across their coarse wet hair that are said to soothe the soul to the point of numbness. Retri. Superstition has it that anyone who is fortunate enough to encounter a Retri is blessed with good fortune. Seeing one together with an Absol in the wild is said to be a once in a lifetime occurrence. Pyroagonal. They are born in the craters of volcanoes. Their bodies are made of molten lava, making them insufferable to be around, as the heat is too much to bear unless accompanied by a cryogonal. Selke. Viking sailors dating back to the time of the Cedar region have told stories of spotting these dazzling Pokemon out at sea beneath an array of colorful auroras. Phantom. Having absorbed twice as many souls into the Keystone, it's fueled by their darkest intentions, able to engulf the brightest of light into its abyss. The Firen region is home to two dueling pseudo lines, one of fire and one of ice, to represent the land of fire and ice, as well as the Firen region's themes of duality and division. Helmet. Their icy helmets protect their heads against the fiercest hailstorms, and also against crashes, as they love racing amongst each other down snowy slopes. Emirheim. They claim entire sections of Ice Schult Mountain as their territory. Very few Pokemon dare challenge them as their icy cold attacks often result in frostbite. Yatantra. King of Ice Schult Mountain, their icy armor sparkles like the Borel Aurora. With one blow from their powerful arms, they can freeze all the area around them. They're the sworn enemy of Magnarok. The Yotundra line is exclusive to Ice Schult Mountain. Kindled. Kindlad splash around in magna pools and love rolling down from volcanoes, leaving scorch marks behind them. Surtorch. They wage turf wars on their peers to claim volcanic areas. They spew flames and then headbutt their confused prey. Their powerful skull usually finishes the job. Maknaruk. The king of Fire Salt Mountain's active volcano with its molten hot armor emitting intense heat, rivaling that of its volcanic kingdom. They are the sworn enemy of Yotundra. The Magnarok line is exclusive to Fire Shult Mountain. The next batch of Pokemon are actually from the Firen region's hypothetical DLC expansions. The Queen's Beauty 
and the king's bounty. Verminit. Verminit are found in most households of the Galdor Islands, used to keep time with their whiskers. Our rodent have an impeccable sense of time, making the perfect companion for those who struggle with time management. Blush sheep. Beautiful flowers bloom in blush sheep's bush-like wool, painting a beautiful scene as they can be found in abundance just about everywhere you look within the Goldor Islands. Ba peep. Ba peep gracefully shepherds the blush sheep that overpopulate the Galdor Islands. Goo goose. Goo goose are rather loud and immature Pokemon, who without a governess to look after them would get into unspeakable trouble. Governess. Governess single handedly entertains and cares for large flocks of Goo goose until they are ready to leave the nest. All three of these enchanting lines can be found all over the first DLC's gorgeous Galdor Islands. Jetray. Jetray soar through the skies at incredible breakneck speeds. They are used as emergency shuttles to and from the Volhimen Islands. Colossor. Colossor are used to transport passengers to and from the Volhimen Islands. They're so big you can see them soaring through the sky far below in the Firin region. Many trainers dreaming of one day catching one. Halofin. Touching the halo floating above Halofin's head is said to heal any illness or infection. Seraphish. Its halo draws power from the sun, which it's able to use to heal other people's illnesses and inflictions through contact. Skyfosa. Using their cloud-like body, they can summon a variety of weather conditions depending on their mood. You must be careful not to upset one, as it will create a tremendous thunderstorm. Idrasil. Whether at day or night, Iridesil paint the sky, leaving an array of dazzling bright colors in their wake. To represent the fact that Iceland pretty much has two seasons, on a long winter and in a long summer, Iridesil has two forms you can catch it in, depending on the season. All of these flying type lines can be found in the second DLC's Sea of Clouds location, high above the Firin region. Now, I'd like to go into all the legendary Pokemon of the Firin region. Of course, starting with the two mascot legendary Pokemon of Pokemon Brain and Pokemon Brawn. Il Ruse. The master of mischief, this divine Pokemon casts powerful illusions to confuse and manipulate its foes. There are rumors that it's the mastermind behind Team Brain working from the shadows. Stormer. This mighty warrior is said to be able to summon powerful thunderbolts from the sky that are able to destroy entire cities with the swing of its hammer fist. Many people are convinced that this divine Pokemon is secretly leading Team Brawn into war. The next two Pokemon are the mascots of the two DLC expansions, the Queen's Beauty and the King's Bounty. Matriarch. Matriarch is as kind as it is majestic, helping to look after and care for all of the wild Pokemon within the Galdor Islands. Legend has it, Matriarch will gift those it touches with eternal beauty. These tales of its beauty are said to be what inspired the Pokemon Contest Festival within the Galdor Islands. Aetherloven King of wisdom, war, and wonder, this, this omniscient divine Pokemon sees everything. After foreseeing the destruction of the Firin region, it gave birth to the Transforge phenomenon as it desired a warrior worthy of wielding it to defeat this grave threat. Nidhogaya. They root themselves deep within the subsoil of the earth with its large tree-like body intertwined with all of the surrounding plant life. Its roar is said to have the power to cause entire forests to spring out of the ground. Faferno. They live in caves surrounded by Viking treasure in which they defend with their scorching hot fire breath. Its flames are said to be hot enough to melt gold. Yermarin. They live deep within the oceans of the Arctic where they cause havoc on any ships that pass by, said to be far more destructive than the roughest of storms. Nikuron. Legend has it this huntingly beautiful Pokemon only emerges from the sea at the dead of night beneath the full moon. It uses the enchanting eyes on its tail fin to lure those whose hearts are filled with darkness to the depths of the ocean as retribution. Urdhast. Dancing flames burn bright for those in mourning. While looking through this flickering fire, one is able to see their past. Verdantest. Those burdened by past or present are said to be frozen in place by its icy aura. Imprisoned in time, one can only be freed after fully focusing on the here and now. 
Skuldest. Those this Pokemon encounter who feel lost in life are said to be given a jolt of inspiration, showing them just how electricity, just how electric their future could be if they put their mind to it. Frostfire. This force of nature once threatened to destroy the entire Firin region, being split in two by the divine Pokemon at Lodin and the three legendary Norns. Each half was separated between Fireshult and Iceshult Mountain respectively, known today as Yotundra and Magnarok. Vaihtur. Able to shapeshift and live within all the various biomes of the Firin region, this guardian spirit protects its peers from harm, and only shows itself to the purest of heart. Each of Vietra's forms are larger in size, representing a different animal, but like its base form, still maintains elements from various different animals. Each form also gains new stats and a new type in place of its ghost typing. It changes forms in battle using one of its four signature attacks. All four signature attacks start as ghost type attacks, but after changing forms, become treated as the type of their new form instead for more coverage and to help further boost the stats of that given form. Now, Viature would be distributed as a special mystery gift event, as most mythical Pokemon are. And it wouldn't be the entire Fear and Pokedex without featuring the full Cedar Pokedex from Pokemon Legends Realmdahl, as the Cedar region is just a past version of the Fearin region when it's first being settled. And these Pokemon will even be available in the modern day Fearin region within the post game by connecting the two games. Of course, this is all hypothetical. Please know these aren't actual games or fan games. Anyways, I will be doing a brief gloss over of all the Cedar Pokemon as well, so if you'd like to learn more about them, make sure to check out the full video. It's one of my most popular and easily one of my favorites, as it's an all in one adventure. Explore the Firin region's ancient past. Long before the events of Pokemon Brain and Pokemon Brawn, when it was known as the mysterious Cedar region. After being rescued from out at sea, to survive this dangerous new world, you must travel alongside the region's first group of settlers, the Revered Voyage Clan, a group of raiders determined to find and acquire as many Pokemon as possible, having already done so in various other regions. They will even gift you with one of the Pokemon they have plundered to help assist you on your adventure. At a time where most people feared Pokemon, the Voyage Clan saw their potential and used them as weapons to conquer new lands. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, please feel free to leave a comment down below, and don't forget to support all of the amazing artists who helped draw all of my concepts and designs so I could take you on this journey through my imagination. Thanks for watching.